Hello, I'm Dustin Kirkland, and I'm joined here with Janet Kuo, software engineer at Google, and she's going to share with us a bit of her experience around Kubernetes here at KubeCon in, uh, in Copenhagen. Um, I understand that working in the workloads area in Kubernetes, you've got some expert perspectives on how uh, Kubernetes is changing the life of an application developer and an IT administrator. So, um, yes, so Kubernetes absolutely help people stop thinking about uh, infrastructure or their computers, machines, but start thinking about um, the things that they actually cares about, like services and how to run their applications. And also uh, other ecosystems such as Istio also mm. help people to um, decouple the operations and developers and make it very easy for them to uh, work I, uh, work independently but coordinate together. Yeah, so you'd say that it's really helping application developers spend time on their application, their yes. code, far less so than on the rest of the infrastructure stack. Yeah, and the operations team can work on things like how to deploy the applications and how to manage them, how to manage the policies of those applications. Right, right. Yeah. So from a workload perspective, what types of workloads do uh, are, are you, you know, working to uh, improve in Kubernetes? So when I first started, I, um, I, um, Kubernetes only support stateless workloads then. Huh, right. So I wrote the uh, deployment API. Okay. But then we figured that people need more than stateless workloads. Mm -hmm. So then we have the stateful set that helps people to run their stateful applications. Sure. And we also have the jobs and current jobs API for batch processing. Right. And most recently, we have the uh, native support for Kubernetes in Spark. OK. And that's just announced a, um, a while ago. Right. And then, so people, uh, if people are using Spark, they can run it on Kubernetes native right. now. Maybe for um, uh, just giving a bit of education to some of the people watching this. Can you maybe explain some of the differences between stateful, stateless, and then batch uh, processing, and how that fits in the Kubernetes? Sure. So for stateless applications, it's things like your uh, web applications that you may run a multiple instance of the same thing, mm -hmm. and they're seen as disposable. Mm -hmm. So you, uh, if something uh, dies, you, you don't care, you just right. create more. Right. But for stateful applications, you care about their um, unique identity. Right. So each of your um, pod, your instance, your application instance will be similar, but they'll each have their own identity, their storage, their network ID, right. things like that. And for batch processing, it's for you to um, be able to tell Kubernetes uh, how many um, part I want to run at a time to process my jobs. Right, yeah. So maybe stateful applications might be something like a database, for instance? Yeah, database or uh, a clustered application. Cluster applications, okay. Stateless might be something like a, a web front end or a proxy. Yeah. Right? Yes. Uh, and then batch processing might be image. Yeah, image, image processing, processing or you have a bunch of email you want to okay. send or you want to back up something. And do you feel like all three of those are equally as well supported as workloads in the in the Kubernetes community today? Um, so the stateless applications are definitely the most mature one. Right, because that's where we started. Really. Yeah, that's where we started, and that's um, the most uh, simplest model that we support. Mm -hmm. And for the other, um, like batch and stateful workloads, they're still, um, uh, it's also pretty mature because they are all GA. Okay. But we have, uh, we keep hearing people's feedback, and we are trying to improve those. Yep. For example, for batch, some people want an uh, index job, like they want better support, and we may support that in core, or we may create something, uh, some customized controllers for people to be able to do their own things outside of core. Right. And from a workload perspective, what do you think are maybe some of the most interesting CNCF and cloud native 
uh, ecosystem of projects today? Um, so f there are a bunch of projects. For example, the Istio is one of the Istio, most interesting. Yeah. yeah, CNCF project for me. And there are also a lot of people uh, uh, around workloads. They are building different um, tools for making it easy for you to write your uh, write your controllers, right? Like um, like operators, right? Or like uh, QB builder, things like that. Mm -hmm. And that's very interesting yeah. for me. Yeah, yeah, it is really interesting. Um, so you're involved with the community quite a bit, right? Would you say most of your work is done now? Most of your engineering work is done in the public in the in the Kubernetes community at this point. Yeah. So most of my work lives on uh, GitHub. Yeah. 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 Um, and what what's been your experience so far working in the Kubernetes community? So the community has grown a lot, and at first we we are pushing to find more and more. Uh, people to write code, mm -hmm. but now we find that we have so many uh, PRs to reviews and we are short on reviewers. So we are trying to fix that mm -hmm. by uh, ramping up more contributors, make them own more code, and um, be one of the um, reviewers of some expert areas. Right. Yeah. Now, reviewing code still takes uh, takes a developer to do. Are there other areas of the community that uh, maybe uh, non-developers can get involved from a Kubernetes perspective? Sure. Um, so, for example, Docs is mm -hmm. one of the um, most appreciated appreciated <laughs> work. Yeah. So I remember when I joined, uh, where we don't have a. So people often criticize like oh, Kubernetes doesn't have good docs, or we mm. cannot understand the docs that you yeah. write. So we've been improving that, and we uh, created more and more um, tutorials, and we recently did a doc revamp. So if you go to the Kubernetes.io website, you'll yep. see the new format. Kubernetes.io, yep, documentation, yeah, yep, that's yeah. great. Uh, testing QA, uh, of course, yeah, right? Yeah, testing QA. I'm involved in uh, SIG product, actually. So there's a SIG PM, a product management one. So yeah, there's there's quite a few ways to contribute to Kubernetes yeah. outside of just writing and reading code, right? Yeah. Uh, good. Um, do, along those lines, do you have any advice for any um, students or young engineers who are coming to the Kubernetes community perhaps for the first time? So for students, I would... Um, so we have one... Uh, contributor mm -hmm. who is uh, called Lucas. He's a, he was a high school student oh, wow. and was the youngest contributor in our community. So I want to call out and to let people know that don't feel intimidated to join the Kubernetes community. It's a very welcoming community. Yeah, it's it? very yeah. welcoming. And if you don't know where to start, you can just start with browsing all the six mm -hmm. and to figure out which one you want to join. And if you, if you don't know which one to join, you can just join the contributor experience because that's the first you can you know give feedback, like what I see from the contributor side, right. what process you can improve. Right. Yeah. Ah, that's great. You called out Lucas. Uh, is there anyone else in the Kubernetes community that you find particularly inspiring, someone that you might want to give a, a shout out to, uh, a, a public uh, thank mm. you? <laughs> Oh, there are so many people. Yeah. For example, Brian Grant. Oh. I first worked with him. Uh, and then Eric Toon. Mm. And for people outside of Google, I would say Clayton. is one of the um, uh, earliest uh, contributor to Kubernetes. And he's, he's been involving in every conversations and every PRs. And he has a lot of insights. Right. Yeah. And what? Um, one uh, final question. How did you first come to Kubernetes? What was your introduction to Kubernetes like? So I came to, so Kubernetes is my first project at Google. <laughs> and when I interviewed at Google, um, I got a phone call from Tim Hawking. And he s just basically sold me the idea. Because Kubernetes wasn't a thing at right. that time yet. Okay. and 
uh, a lot of other orchestrating solutions are much more popular than Kubernetes, and people even don't know how to spell or pronounce Kubernetes <laughs> at that time. So yeah, uh, after getting his phone call, I was like, I I'm in. I'm sold. Yeah, I'm sold. Very cool. Well, Janet, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm.